can we do? We're, we're aging, as I said, with every breath. It's an, a given. It's a fact of life. And uh, to improve the quality of our life, what are some of the things that you've discovered that uh, maybe we didn't uh, know mm -hmm. yesterday that uh, relieves stress and or gives us a better quality of life? Anything in particular? So one of the, um, one of the key reducers of stress for me is being here. Okay. Because I think that... Well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and I, I think that... Um, and, and asking and wanting to be engaged and wanting to understand the dilemma. Mm -hmm. I think one of the stressors in the healthcare industry workforce right now is that we are obviously in a dilemma, mm -hmm. right? And there's an eye on us. So, you know, when you look at what we spend in our gross national product on healthcare, you know, there's people who in a short summary would say, you know, we're bankrupting the country. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of focus right now on our industry and the massive changes that need to happen in the way that we deliver care right. and the way that we coordinate and collaborate and communicate with each other so that we can be more effective and reduce waste in the healthcare industry. And, you know, it is absolutely crucial that the public and the patients be engaged in the solutions to that dilemma. And what, are, what do you think some of those are? Uh, so the ways that the consumer, so first of all, we just had our community needs assessment done. Okay, that's a good by, uh, Oh, very good. Group. The Institute of Public Policy at Wilkes University. The which things is, that go on that you don't Which know. is a consortium mm -hmm. of colleges. And, you know, they just were funded through the State Health Improvement Project. Excellent. Which is um, an organization called Healthy Northeast. Healthy Northeast, yes. Gathers many stakeholders. We're fortunate the to hospitals, have The hospitals, the Wright Center, we're mm -hmm. very fortunate. The medical college is represented on yes. there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Healthy Northeast commissioned a needs analysis that went out and studied the region and did some focus group with patients in different areas of the region. Great. To Ask find the out patients. what are your health needs. Mm -hmm. What are your concerns? What are the barriers to getting healthy? And um, you know, how can we put this together in one document to give clear message to all of the community resource agencies about maybe how they should prioritize different things that they're working on that could be a solution to what you need? Okay. The needs assessment basically said that we have an aging population. We have a deficiency of doctors and healthcare providers. And um, we have a lot of mental health challenges and behavioral mm. health challenges, behavioral. Mm -hmm. um, a prevalence of obesity, mm -hmm. and um, uh, let's see, and, and transportation barriers and things about getting to the doctor, and a lack of awareness. And we still have a significant uninsurance rate in northeastern Pennsylvania. So I think that there's a lot of um, opportunities to communicate to the aging population what is new. And I think that, um, you know, you can get bulletins and they're very complicated to read. So um, I'm not an expert on what's new in geriatric um, care provision or the insurance world, but I can tell you some bullets of what's going yeah, on because I think it would be very helpful. Yeah. So I think one of the biggest things that's happened in the last four or five years um, that's really exciting is that Medicare which was previously, mm -hmm. you know, Medicare is the federal payer for health care. Right. And a lot of times they lead the game in terms of what's covered, what's not, what's paid for, what's right. not. And what you pay for is a lot of what gets incentivized in terms of the care delivery. So, you know, about a couple years ago, maybe four years ago, Medicare actually, after 35 years, since the mid-60s, being an organization that essentially paid for evaluation and management, or E&M codes, that's what it's called, evaluation and management, which pretty much insinuated that you had a problem. So they paid mm. for sick care, mm. okay? They paid for the doctor's services to take care of a problem. Mm -hmm. And um, many times in healthcare, we were kind of providing well care anyway, but it really wasn't the incentivized care provision to an aging population. A couple years ago, Medicare actually um, really instituted a paradigm change and started paying for well care. And so, well care. Well care. Ah, so you're, so you're being paid to keep me well. That's right. Not when so, I am ill or in dire straits. And the interesting thing is they began funding well care at rates that were better than sick care. Ah. That changes the behavior of an industry. Absolutely. To get strategic and well. Mm -hmm. And it takes down barriers to um, a Medicare recipient coming to the doctor to have well care because it's a covered service, okay? So um, that was major change from Medicare. 
coincidental with that, so they cover like what's called a welcome to Medicare visit. So like, welcome, you are now 65 and you are a Medicare patient. And you know, they outline what they expect for you in terms of health promotion and prevention to talk about with your doctor oh, in the components of required care. Very good. Mm. And then every year thereafter, you're entitled to an annual well visit where you can go in and actually have covered services to have a conversation that's focused on health promotion and wellness. Marvelous. And what would that conversation uh, So that conversation seem like? um, includes really getting into the essence um, and the quality of your life. So, you know, um, how are you doing? What is your functional status? Have you fallen down? Um, do you have any current disabilities just with your activities of daily living? What are your social supports? Um, what are the things that challenge you on an everyday basis? Um, do you have uh, barriers to the basic necessities mm -hmm. and you know meeting your own needs, living independently? Um, obviously, still addressing any health concerns that you might have. Mm -hmm. um, are you vaccinated? Have you got a flu? Is there a barrier to why you wouldn't want one? Mm -hmm. Have you had a pneumonia shot? What about the cancer screenings that we offer, including mammograms and colonoscopies? And, you know, a visit where there's time to actually address those issues, because a lot of times in a crisis or a reactive situation for evaluation of a new problem, they're not the top agenda of either the patient or the doctor. Uh, on another topic, again, not being mm -hmm. a physician, I tend to think that, wow, I, I, my cholesterol has slightly risen. Perhaps it's hereditary, perhaps it is not. But I see all the advertisements on television and mm -hmm. I think, well, there's a magic bullet out there. Mm -hmm. At what point do we take responsibility for our own health mm -hmm. and stop looking to all the advertisements as this magic bullet that will help us all, this magic pill? That's a great question. I hope. Uh, <laughs> that, that's a great question because you know what? Um, we spend so much in our economy on the promotion of new drugs and, you know, studies that were done or black box warnings mm -hmm. or, you know, um, and it's funny because um, there's definitely like a subliminal education campaign depending mm -hmm. on, you know, what sources you use right. as a consumer. Well, I see that it's not my fault on half of the commercials. Correct. And what you deserve is this. It's not my fault. Right. But and there's pretty good, you know, there's good evidence to a number of drugs, which is the fundamental basis of evidence-based medicine. And we can rig that in our electronic medical records now, and I can guide my clinical decision-making where your number is crossed with your age and your risk profile, and it tells me right on this thing, this person needs a statin for their right. cholesterol. In the healthcare industry, when you talk about lifestyle changes and accountability for your health, you're really crossing over from what has traditionally been a medical care delivery system mm -hmm. into a behavioral and mm -hmm. mental health delivery mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now, there are very limited effective models of integrating behavioral and medical health care. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the reality is, is that when you look at diabetes and heart disease and hypertension, um, the greatest data is for lifestyle modifications and self-management support. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the doctors and the care providers aren't necessarily trained in the skills of motivational interviewing mm -hmm. and self-management support mm -hmm. that's required to address the behavioral health issues mm -hmm. because we've been trained in medical models of care right. delivery. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot going on, exciting in education, certainly with the new medical school and the primary care residency expansions with the Wright Center. We have a really big opportunity to look at our educational models and build new skill sets. Well, that's what I'm seeing, and I'm hearing yeah. from what you're, you're saying, that we're, we're developing a partnership with our health and our longevity. And uh, I think that's exciting. Oh, it's so exciting. And you know what's like it's a partnership for health and longevity and um, really the whole dilemma of the healthcare industry, how care gets delivered, the unaffordability of it. There's something called the Institute for Healthcare Improvement and um, you know that organization has named a triple aim. That triple aim is very important for the public to be aware of. Okay. okay. I'm the public. Is, right. Better, <laughs> better health, better health care, affordability and affordability right to to achieve the IHI triple aim we must have public engagement and alignment with the healthcare profession
we must. Absolutely. Yes. Well, just look how uh, our perception of what is good or bad for us has changed in, in the years. I hate to admit it, but as a young teenager, I was a smoker. I knew nothing of uh, the folly of it mm -hmm. and how devastating it would be to my future health. Mm -hmm. But um, that's why I'm afraid I'm, I get a little judgmental when I see children smoking today because they seem to know better than, than I um, at the time mm -hmm. uh, what was good and what was bad. So w at what point does that judgment go in your uh, box of, of tricks because you understand really truly all of the downsides of, of uh, the things that we do to harm ourselves. Well I can tell you that um, ineffective models of care delivery where there's medical and behavioral um, integration mm -hmm. of care delivered, mm -hmm. um, you know, non-compliant goes away. Ah. And um, every outcome that isn't the greatest outcome is kind of looked at as an opportunity for greater teachable moments and more effective care delivery. Marvelous. Right. So it's education again, education, education. <coughs> it's education, 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 mm -hmm. and constant learning from each other and from your patients and changing your frame of reference. And instead of getting um, frustrated, assuming that they don't really understand mm -hmm. and trying to become a more effective teacher, in absolutely paraphrasing, but taking directly from your website, which we will give to our viewing audience, because we want you to really have an excellent uh, bill of health this lifetime and uh, really enjoy your well-being. The Wright Center has provided cutting-edge medical residency training for primary care physicians in northeastern Pennsylvania. And at the same time, it states that you provide innovative team-based health care in the patient-centered medical home model. I was hoping you could uh, describe that a little bit uh, more accurately and um, tell our viewing audience how they can be part of the Wright Center. What do they have to do to find you and, and uh, partake of all this wonderful knowledge and futuristic health care? Okay, so you know the patient-centered medical home delivery model is really the delivery model that summarizes much of what we talked about today. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so it really talks about the role of the primary care um, delivery system okay. and how it advocates and takes really good care of patients in a patient-centered and family-centered way um, that's responsive to their needs and really focused on keeping them well and really empowering them to better self-manage support their chronic diseases mm -hmm. um, so that they can have longevity and high quality um, in the time that they're alive. So um, we're really excited to be an NCQA. That's kind of the national organization that certifies medical mm -hmm. homes. We're really excited to have worked and actually received NCQA level three. That's the highest designation to be a medical home. And we've done that through a lot of hard work about changing the way that we deliver care. Um, getting wired with electronic medical records, using them to help us take better care of patients at the point of care, but also at a level of populations. And um, really exciting uh, is the introduction of even patient portals where they can directly access through the internet their charts ah. um, and really getting into patient engagement even in the charting and documentation ah. and the stewardship of their healthcare record. So that's very exciting. So patient-centered medical homes are a delivery model wow. that really emphasizes team-based care, really getting into care coordinating as you navigate the healthcare delivery system and using the electronic medical record and um, new staff development models to be able to do that. Doctor, let me stop you there. We're short on time. Five words that or adjectives that could describe <coughs> our future health care. On the spot. Patient, Few words. Patient-centered. Patient-centered. Committed to excellence. Committed to excellence. Team-based. Team-based. Yes. Coordinated. And coordinated. And, and affordable. A, affordable. Excellent. That is our show today. We thank you again for watching Northeast Current. As always, we, we bring you the best and the brightest that our area has to offer and beyond. We want to thank our guest, Dr. Linda Thomas-Hemack, who I think gave us a lot of good pointers on how we can empower our lives, live long and prosper. I'm your host, Lisa Marie Gurley. Thank you and goodbye.